Welcome to Aviation World. We will start this lesson with an overview of the function and capabilities of the engine system. Later in your training, you will learn the relationship between the engines, auto thrust, and flight management system. These systems are highly integrated and beyond the scope of this lesson. An in-depth discussion of auto thrust operation and protections, for example, alpha floor, will be discussed later in training. At the end of this lesson, you will understand how you interact and operate the engines. A320 series aircraft are equipped with two IAF V25-A5 series high bypass turbofan engines. A319s are equipped with V2524-A5 engines, each capable of producing up to 24,000 pounds of thrust. A319 is a D-rated version of the A321 engine. A321s are equipped with 2533-A5 engines, each capable of producing up to 32,500 pounds of thrust. A321 engines are covered in the differences section. Like most modern high bypass turbofan engines, these engines incorporate a fan, low pressure compressor, high pressure compressor, combustion chamber with two igniters, high pressure turbine, and low pressure turbine. After passing through a fan section of the engine, a majority of the airflow bypasses the remaining sections of the engine. The low speed rotor, or N1, consists of the fan and a low pressure compressor connected to a low pressure turbine. The high pressure rotor, N2, consists of a high pressure compressor connected to a high pressure turbine. An accessory gearbox is located at the bottom of the fan case and is driven by the high pressure rotor. Critical items driven by the accessory gearbox include the fuel pump, oil pump for engine lubrication, an alternator that automatically provides power when the engine reaches 10% N2. This allows the engine computers to have a source of electrical power when the engine is running independent of the aircraft's electrical system. Each engine is equipped with two strakes, inboard and outboard. These strakes provide improved airflow characteristics for the wing. Each engine has an independent full authority digital engine control or FADEC that provides complete engine management. The FADEC is sometimes referred to as the electronic engine control or EEC. This is important to remember when communicating with maintenance. Each FADEC can be powered by its own dedicated alternator or by the aircraft's electrical system. The FADECs are cooled using ambient air. Each FADEC controls its respective engine for maximum fuel efficiency and surge-free operation. Major functions that the FADECs perform include fuel flow, thrust reverser, and ignition control, protection from exceeding N1, N2, and EPR limits at all times, protection from exceeding EGT limits during automatic starts on the ground, protection for starter engagement time and re-engagement speed, computation of fuel used and thrust limits, computation of thrust penalties for the use of air conditioning and ice protection, acceleration and deceleration schedules, idle settings, and providing engine information for cockpit display to other aircraft systems. The engines can be started either manually or automatically. Most engine starts are accomplished using the automatic start procedure. There are significant differences not only between the two types of starts, but also whether or not the start is being performed on the ground or in flight. During an automatic start on the ground, the FADIC controls the start sequence and provides start valve and high pressure fuel valve control, fuel flow and ignition monitoring and control, protection from exceeding EGT limits, N1 and N2 monitoring, control of start aborts and restart attempts, 
FADIC Start Abort Authority and EGT Protection are only provided during automatic starts on the ground, no other time. In other words, EGT Protection is not provided during takeoffs, go-arounds, manual starts, or any start in flight. The crew controls the start sequence during manual engine starts. The FADIC monitors manual starts and provides warnings and cautions if necessary, but does not provide protections. FADIC Start Abort Authority is never provided during a manual engine start. Manual engine starts are discussed in detail in the normal operations section. Three idle settings are provided and automatically controlled by the respective FADIC. Modulated idle, used on the ground unless reverse thrust is selected, and in flight when the slats are retracted. Approach idle, a higher idle setting which provides more rapid acceleration in the event of a go-around. It is used in flight when the slats are extended. And reverse idle, slightly higher than modulated idle, it is used on the ground when the respective thrust lever is in reverse idle position. The FADICs have two modes of setting thrust, engine pressure ratio, EPR, and N1. EPR mode is the normal mode of thrust control. EPR is the ratio low pressure turbine exhaust, P5, to engine inlet pressure, P2. The desired EPR is set using fuel flow. The FADIC commands EPR as a function of thrust lever angle, altitude, Mach number, ambient temperature, air inlet total temperature, and air bleed demands. N1 modes. If the EPR mode of a FADIC is not available, the affected FADIC automatically reverts to N1 mode. If this occurs, an equivalent thrust to that achieved in EPR mode is provided until thrust lever position is changed. Auto thrust and alpha floor are both lost. These functions are discussed later in training. Depending on the nature of the failure that caused the loss of EPR mode, the FADIC will revert to either rated N1 mode or unrated N1 mode. Rated N1 mode. In rated mode, N1 limits are displayed on the EWD and the FADIC protections remain unchanged. The rated N1 mode can be selected manually using an engine N1 mode push button on the overhead panel. Unrated N1 mode. An automatic reversion to unrated N1 mode occurs if both EPR and rated N1 modes are not available. In unrated mode, N1 limits are not displayed on the EWD and the FADIC over speed protections are reduced. It is possible to exceed certain engine limitations in unrated N1 mode. The N1 modes are discussed in detail in the abnormal operations section. EPR recovery logic. With the FADIC in either rated or unrated N1 mode, selecting an engine N1 mode push button on, then off may recover the EPR mode if the failure condition is no longer present. We will discuss the engine and one mode push buttons in more detail in the abnormal operation section. While the FADIC may be considered the most significant engine computer, it is not the only computer. There are many computers and sensors that allow the engine to operate properly. If the thrust is being set manually, the pilot uses the thrust levers to set the thrust and the FADIC uses the thrust lever angle to determine the appropriate thrust output. If auto thrust is active, the flight management system calculates the required thrust. Regardless of whether the required thrust is being set manually or calculated by the FMS, each FADIC controls the thrust of its respective engine. The functions of auto thrust are beyond the scope of this lesson. However, a brief description of the relationship between thrust levers and auto thrust will be discussed later in this lesson. Each FADIC has two identical and independent channels, A and B. Either channel is capable of operating the engine. One channel is active and the other is in standby. If the active channel fails, the other becomes active automatically. When N2 is greater than 10%, its FADIC is powered by an alternator driven by the accessory gearbox. When an engine is not running 
or should the alternator fail, each Vedic can be supplied by the aircraft's electrical system. The fuel system supplies fuel to the combustion chambers at the required rate and pressure calculated by the FADEC. The FADEC computes the fuel flow necessary to maintain the target thrust level. Fuel pressure is supplied by the accessory gearbox driven low pressure and high pressure fuel pumps. Fuel flows through two shutoff valves that can be controlled from the cockpit. Pushing and releasing an engine fire push button closes only the respective low pressure fuel valve. Selecting an engine master switch off closes both the respective high pressure and low pressure fuel valves. We will discuss these valves again in the normal operation section. Fuel is used to cool engine and IDG oil. Fuel pressure is also used to open and close various valves in the engine. These functions are carried out automatically and require no pilot intervention. Two identical independent igniters A and B are installed in each engine's combustion chamber. The ignition system is controlled by the FADEC. The ignition system is used for engine starting on the ground, restarts in flight, and as a preventative against engine flameout in certain conditions. The ignition system can be activated automatically or manually. We will look at manual activation later in this lesson. The FADEC automatically activates continuous ignition on the respective engine when the engine is running and any of the following occur. An engine anti-ice push button is selected on, takeoff thrust selected, the engine interface unit fails, approach idle is active, an engine flameout or surge is detected in flight, and the engine master is cycled from on to off then back to the on position. Each engine is equipped with hydraulically actuated thrust reversers that are controlled independently by the respective FADEC. Reverse thrust is achieved by directing the flow of fan air forward. Aft moving translating sleeves are installed on each engine. Pivoting blocker doors are installed inside the cowl on each engine. When reverse thrust is selected, the translating sleeves moves aft and the blocker doors pivot to deflect fan air forward through a now exposed cascade. Only fan air is used for reverse thrust, no core air is used. The FADEC is programmed with multiple safety features to ensure the reversers only deploy on the ground and only when requested by the pilot. Reverser deployment requires at least one FADEC channel is functioning normally and has received a reverser signal from that engine's thrust lever. The aircraft is sensed on the ground by at least one landing gear control and interface unit. The thrust lever reverser signal is further confirmed by at least one spoiler elevator computer. FADEC limits thrust to idle reverse until the respective engine's reversers are fully deployed. If an uncommanded reverser deployment occurs, the FADEC automatically commands idle thrust on the respective engine. In this section, we will first discuss the engine controls available in the cockpit, followed by how the engine information is presented on the ECAM. We will start with the controls for each engine start and shutdown, which are located on the center pedestal just behind the thrust levers. When the engine 1 and engine 2 master switches are selected off, both the low pressure and high pressure fuel valves close, causing both engines to shut down. Moving these switches from on to off also resets both channels of the respective FADEC. Advance to select both engine master switches off. The fire lights just aft of the master switches are warning lights, not push buttons. The fire light illuminates if a fire is detected on the respective engine. It is a repeater of the light in the engine fire push button on the overhead panel. Engine fire detection is covered in the fire protection lesson. The fault light illuminates and an ECAM message is displayed if any of the following occur. An automatic start abort, a start valve fault, or a disagreement between the high pressure fuel valve position and its commanded position. 
In this example, there has been an automatic start abort. In this example, the high pressure fuel valve is in disagreement with its commanded position. The engine mode selector has three positions. For most of the flight, it is usually left in the norm position. In the norm position, the FADIC automatically activates continuous ignition on the respective engine, igniters A and B, if the engine is running and any of the conditions listed here are met. The ignition start position has two functions. Manually selects continuous ignition on both engines simultaneously if running. If an engine is not running, the ignition start position prepares it for the start process. The mode selector must be moved from ignition start to norm back to ignition start to manually select continuous ignition after the engines are started. The crank position is used for those situations where engine rotation is desired but starting is not. The crank position does not crank the engine. The crank position prepares the engine for dry cranking by inhibiting ignition and fuel flow. The starter will engage and the engine will dry crank no ignition or fuel flow when the respective man start push button is selected on. The basic dry cranking procedure is to move the engine mode selector to crank and then select the respective man start push button on. Refer to your aircraft manuals for more details regarding the dry cranking procedure. The engine panel is used for manual starts and abnormal operations. The man start push buttons are used in conjunction with the crank position of the engine mode selector to dry crank either engine if necessary. The man start push buttons are also used if performing a manual engine start. We will use this function in the normal operations section. The N1 mode push buttons allow the crew to revert thrust control from EPR mode to N1 rated mode. This will be explained in the abnormal operations section. The thrust levers are located on the center pedestal. Notice that they are referred to as thrust levers, not throttles. Also, unlike more conventional aircraft, there is no mechanical linkage between the thrust levers and the engines. Thrust lever angle is communicated electronically to the FADIX. The thrust levers never move on their own. The thrust levers only move as a result of pilot action. When thrust is being operated manually, auto thrust off, thrust corresponds to the position of the thrust levers. Pull them aft to decrease thrust or push them forward to increase thrust. During forward thrust, the thrust levers are moved through an arc that is defined by two stops. Zero, which signifies idle thrust, and Toga, takeoff go around, which provides maximum available thrust and is limited to five minutes. In between these two stops are two detents. The detent mark CL is the climb detent. Selecting this detent, request climb thrust is being controlled manually. This detent is also the normal position of the thrust levers when auto thrust is active. More on this in just a little bit. The other detent is flex MCT, which has two functions. Selected on the ground, this detent requests flexed or reduced thrust for takeoff. This is similar to derated thrust on other aircraft. Selected in flight, this detent requests max continuous thrust. This is generally only used during abnormal operations, for example, one engine inoperative. The two thrust levers are also used to control the reversers. Two latching reverser levers are used to select reverse thrust. When the thrust levers are not at the idle stop, the reversers are mechanically locked down. When the thrust levers are at the idle stop, reverse can be selected by lifting the reverser levers. This allows the thrust levers to be pulled back beyond the forward idle stop and into the reverse idle detent. Advance to lift the reverser levers and move the thrust levers to the reverse idle detent. The thrust levers are now in the reverse idle detent. The reversers will deploy and thrust will remain at reverse idle, which is slightly higher than forward idle.
Once the reverser is fully deployed, reverse thrust on the respective engine increases as the thrust levers are moved aft of the reverse idle detent. Max reverse thrust is achieved by moving the thrust levers fully aft to the full reverse stop. Advance to move the thrust levers to the full reverse stop. The thrust levers are now at full reverse stop. If desired, the level of reverse thrust may be varied by moving the respective thrust lever between reverse idle and max reverse. Max reverse should not be used below 70 knots under normal circumstances. To stow the reversers and resume forward thrust operations, simply push forward on the thrust levers until they move to the idle stop and the reverser levers latch down. There is no requirement to stop at the idle reverse detent. Do not attempt to hold the reverser levers while attempting to move the thrust levers to the idle stop. Advance to move the thrust levers to the idle stop. The reversers are now stowed and the thrust is at idle. The alternative to manual thrust control is the aircraft's auto thrust system. The relationship between auto thrust, the thrust levers, and the rest of the auto flight system is quite complex. For this reason, we will discuss only the basic relationship between auto thrust, the thrust levers, and the engines. You will learn more about auto thrust later during training. Auto thrust can be either off or engaged. When engaged, auto thrust has two modes, armed or active. Auto thrust is automatically armed during takeoff when the thrust levers are moved to toga or flex. Auto thrust may also be engaged by pushing the FCU auto thrust push button. Advance to apply takeoff power. The auto thrust is now engaged but merely armed. It is not yet active. Notice that the auto thrust push button is illuminated. Thrust remains under manual control until auto thrust is active. In this example, toga thrust will continue to be provided until the thrust levers are moved into the auto thrust active range. The auto thrust active range is from just above idle up to and including the climb deep tent with both engines operating or from just above idle up to and including the flex MCT detent with one engine operating. Advance to move the thrust levers to the climb detent and into the active range. Now auto thrust is engaged and active. Auto thrust will now command the FADEX to provide thrust as necessary. When auto thrust is active, thrust lever position defines the upper limit of available thrust. The thrust levers become thrust limiters. Thrust will not exceed the position of the thrust levers. Therefore, the thrust levers are normally left in the climb detent with auto thrust active. This gives auto thrust its full authority to command any thrust level from idle up into including climb thrust. Note, if alpha floor activates, toga thrust is commanded regardless of thrust lever position. Alpha floor is not discussed in this lesson. If you look closely, you can also see the auto thrust label next to the thrust levers indicating the auto thrust active range when both engines running. If an engine failure is detected, you will be prompted to move the operating engine's thrust lever to the flex MCT detent. This gives auto thrust the authority to command any thrust level from idle up to and including the max continuous thrust on the operating engine. More on this later in training. Auto thrust can be disengaged using either of the two red instinctive disconnect push buttons located on the side of the thrust levers. These push buttons allow you to quickly revert to manual thrust control if necessary. If either of the instinctive disconnect push buttons are pushed, thrust immediately changes to match thrust lever position. Normally, thrust lever position is matched to the current thrust output displayed on the EWD prior to disconnecting auto thrust to prevent an unwanted thrust change. Once again, keep in mind that auto thrust will be disconnected in detail during later training. Advance to push either instinctive disconnect push buttons. Auto thrust is now disengaged. Thrust output now directly corresponds to thrust lever position.
auto thrust could be re-engaged by ensuring the thrust levers are in the active range, normally the climb detent, and by pushing the FCU auto thrust push button. The most common method of disengaging auto thrust is moving the thrust levers to idle stop during landing. This action brings the thrust levers out of the auto thrust active range and disengages auto thrust. Thrust operation becomes manual at this point. Advance to move the thrust levers to idle and disengage auto thrust. That concludes our discussion of the cockpit engine controls. Let's move on to how engine operation is monitored. During this section, we will look at indications on LCD style displays. The CRT style displays are slightly different and will be discussed in the differences section. Several engine parameters are displayed on the engine page. It can be either manually or automatically displayed on the system display. Critical engine information is permanently displayed on the engine warning display, which is normally presented on the upper ECAM display unit. We will discuss the EWD first. Note, even though the gauges we will discuss are actually computer generated representations of gauges, we will use gauge when referring to these indications. At the top of the EWD are the all important engine pressure ratio gauges. They are primary indications of thrust output. EPER is displayed in both digital and analog format. The amber tick mark represents max EPER. This is the maximum EPER that can be obtained given the current conditions with the thrust levers in the toga position. The blue circle, often referred to as a donut, indicates thrust lever position. When thrust is controlled manually, the EPER needle moves to follow the blue circle as thrust changes are made. When auto thrust is active, the blue circle remains fixed, normally at the climb thrust EPER value, and the green needle moves to indicate the auto thrust commanded thrust output. The reverse indications are displayed in amber when the respective engine's reverser is unstowed or unlocked. It changes to green when the reverser is fully deployed, assuming reverse thrust was requested. If a reverser is unstowed in flight, the reverse indication flashes amber for a few seconds and then remains steady. We will look at some additional EPER gauge indications in the normal operations section. The thrust limit mode and EPER limit are displayed to the right of the EPER gauges. The EPER limit reflects the FADA calculation of the max EPER for various modes based on current conditions. The mode and EPER limit displayed are based on the thrust lever position and whether the aircraft is on the ground or in flight. When on the ground, with at least one engine running, the TOGA EPER limit is shown, regardless of thrust lever position, with one major exemption described next. If a flex temperature is entered into the McDo takeoff page prior to takeoff, the flex EPER limit and temperature replace the TOGA limit. This will be the achieved EPER during takeoff when the thrust levers are moved to the flex detent. If the thrust levers are advanced to TOGA, the flex limit will be ignored and thrust will go to the TOGA limit and the EPER limit will reflect the new takeoff thrust setting. You will learn more about flex during later training. On the ground, with the engines not running or in flight after flex thrust is no longer in use, the mode and EPER limit are based on thrust lever position. With the thrust levers anywhere but zero idle and the climb detent, the climb thrust limit is shown. With the thrust levers just above the climb detent up to and including the flex MCT detent, the MCT limit is shown. With the thrust levers just above flex MCD detent up to and including the toga stop, the toga limit is shown. The next set of gauges display the exhaust gas temperature for each engine. The current EGT is displayed in digital and analog formats. The amber tick mark indicates the current EGT limit. During engine starts on the ground, the tick mark represents the start limit. When the engine is running, it indicates the continuous operation limit. The amber tick mark is not displayed when any of the following occur. Takeoff thrust is applied, reverse thrust is selected, or alpha floor is active.
If the actual EGT reaches or exceeds the current EGT limit, the digital and analog indications change to amber and pulse. The beginning of the red arc represents the max permissible EGT. If the actual EGT exceeds the max permissible EGT, the digital and analog EGT indications change to red and pulse. A red tick mark is displayed indicating the highest value achieved. The tick mark remains displayed until the next engine start on the ground or until reset by maintenance. Fuel flow to the respective engine is displayed in green on each side of the EGT gauges. Below that is the green digital and two speed indication. It is normally green. It changes to red and a red cross is displayed if N2 exceeds 100%. The red cross remains displayed until the next takeoff or reset by maintenance. The N1 speed is displayed below the EGT gauges in digital and analog formats. The needle and digital change to red if N1 exceeds 100%. Just as with EGT, a red tick mark is displayed indicating the highest N1 achieved. It remains displayed until the next takeoff or until reset by maintenance. An amber check message is displayed near the respective indication if there is a discrepancy between actual and displayed EGT, N1, N2, or fuel flow values. Additional indications that may be displayed on the EWD are Alpha floor indicates that auto thrust has automatically applied toga thrust or idle indicates that both engines are at idle thrust and it flashes for 10 seconds and then remains steady. We will now look at the indications displayed on the engine page. The fuel used for each engine is displayed digitally in green. The fuel used value is reset to zero during engine start and is repeated on the cruise and fuel pages. Since this value is provided by the FADEC independent of the fuel system, it can be useful in determining your fuel state if a fuel quantity discrepancy occurs. Next are the engine oil system indications. A digital and analog display of oil quantity is provided. Both are normally green. They pulse green advisory if the oil quantity drops below approximately 5 quarts. A digital and analog readout of oil pressure is provided. Again, they are both normally green. The digital indication pulses if the high pressure limit is exceeded. The analog and digital indications change to amber if the oil pressure drops below 80 psi and red if it drops below 60 psi. The digital oil temperature indication is normally green. It pulses green above approximately 155 degrees centigrade. It is displayed in amber and an ECAM message is generated if the temperature exceeds 155 degrees centigrade for more than 15 minutes or if 165 degrees centigrade is exceeded for any length of time. Digital vibration indications are provided for both N1 and N2. The respective indication pulses green if it exceeds 5 units. Nacelle temperature indications are displayed at the bottom of the engine page in analog format only. The needles are normally green. The small tick mark on the arc represents 320 degrees centigrade. The indication or needle pulses green if the temperature exceeds 320 degrees centigrade. During engine start, the nacelle temperature indications are replaced by information relating to ignition and start valve operation. The FADIC selected igniters, A, B, or both A and B, are displayed when selected for use. The letter indicates that the specific igniter or igniters have been activated. It does not indicate if they are actually firing. Start valve indications are displayed below the igniters. The start valves are displayed either open or closed. Below each start valve is a digital indication of the bleed pressure available to that start valve. The bleed pressure indication is displayed in amber if the minimum or maximum limits are exceeded. Certain engine parameters are repeated on the cruise page using the same display logic as the engine page. Total fuel used, which is displayed on the cruise page, is not provided on the engine page.
We will now look at normal engine operations. We will start with the preliminary cockpit preparation. The AP is running and is providing electrical power and bleed air. After AC power is established, the FADEX are powered automatically by the aircraft's electrical system and provide engine indications on the EWD. If engine start is not initiated within 5 minutes of aircraft power application, the FADEX shut down automatically and all of the engine indications change to amber X's. During the pre-flight, the overhead engine panel is checked to ensure that all four push buttons are off or lights out. Later in the pre-flight, the engine oil quantity is checked on the engine page. Refer to your aircraft manuals for specific oil requirements.